At this point, what we have is a very simple animation consisting of the ball moving along a path. To give the ball living attributes, we'll need to use point motion. All of the keyframes that are present in the timeline so far have been made via the Follow Path tool and the Ball Layer. Make sure you uncheck the option for relative keyframing. Clear all onion skins and then make sure only these two options are checked. Click in the shaded area of the timeline to set three previous onion skins. These will maintain their relative positions to the time slider. To clear these onion skins, simply click on each shaded marker. Make sure the playback interval is set to 1 and the interpolation method set to smooth. From the animation menu, uncheck Consolidate Layer Channels. We can see that all the channels are now displayed in the timeline with the Follow Path channel containing the keyframes. From the View menu, select Timeline Channels and then click None. Click the plus button for Point Motion and also for Follow Path. Click Apply and then OK. At this point, there are no Point Motion keyframes. Zoom the timeline out using this icon allowing us to work with a larger sequence of keyframes. Holding down the Alt key, right-click here to give us a broader range. Make the path layer visible and begin setting a hold by copying this keyframe, moving the time slider, and then pasting it here. After the hold, we want the ball to slowly move to the right, and then hold again. Use the Copy and Paste commands to make this hold. Now the ball will move rather quickly to the edge and accidentally slip over the side. Placing these keyframes close together will create a slipping motion that happens maybe three times. With the ball saving himself at the last minute and taking his position again on the top of the boulder. Since the ball needs to pause, we need to create a hold by copy and paste. He then moves toward the left side of the boulder and takes another pause. Once he gets his bearings, he moves carefully to the right of the boulder, ready to make his final jump. Use the time slider to slowly move through this sequence to see it in real time. After viewing this segment, we can see that the path needs to be moved slightly to the right so that the ball doesn't intersect the cliff. Select the path layer from the layer panel, and then select the transform tool from the tool panel. Select the path, and then carefully move it to the right. Press G on your keyboard to use the Select Points tool, and then box select these points. Press T on your keyboard to transform these points and move the ball out of the scene, adjusting the curve of the arc as shown. This new path alignment is much more acceptable. Now the fun begins by introducing point motion. Select the ball layer, and then zoom in to focus on the ball. Hide the path layer and scroll through this short portion of the animation to determine what shapes the ball needs to take. Enable the onion skins and then create three previous onion skins. This will help us to gauge the scale of the ball as we stretch and distort it. We'll create all of our point motion by means of the magnet tool. Adjust the influence of the magnet by holding down Alt and dragging left or right. As the ball enters the scene, he's already stretching as he jumps into the air. As he begins to land for the first time, he distorts in the opposite direction. As he lands on the ground, he squashes a little bit. As he jumps a second time, he stretches and then squashes as he lands. After this, he makes a slow roll forward and then a slow roll backward. Distort the ball during this small sequence to look more organic and alive.
Here, there's a very short anticipatory movement just before he makes his giant leap. Use the time slider to preview all of this sequence of motion. Magnify the timeline view to get a more refined view of the keyframes. Move the view so that we can see the ball as he begins his jump. In mid-jump, create this extreme, which becomes even more extreme, until he reaches the peak of his jump, where he becomes his normal shape once again. Copy frame 1 from the point motion channel and then paste it at the peak of the jump. As the ball comes out of the jump and prepares to land, he distorts backward. And as he lands, he squashes first and then returns to his normal shape. Press the play button in the playback controls to see your animation play in real time. Scrolling backward toward the beginning of the animation, we can see that there's a little problem before he makes his jump. We can correct this error by using the Follow Path tool and setting some other keyframes. To see the error more clearly, Enable the visibility of the path. Once you've corrected this, disable the visibility of the path and then play back the animation. Let's set the looping point of the animation just here. Now, play back the animation again to see the final result. Getting the path motion time just right and then adding point motion really adds life as well as an overall sense of believability.